Turtles and tortoises naturally occur on six of our seven continents. They're found in a variety of habitats and each one has its own conservation status. In this video, we're gonna go over 15 different turtles in 15 minutes, some that you may not know we even have or that they even exist. And the clock starts now. All right, let's get things rolling with the pink-bellied side-neck turtle, also known as the red-bellied short-neck turtle. Scientifically, she is Emidora subglobosa. This is a beautiful freshwater turtle species that's native to northern Queensland, Australia, and also southern Papua New Guinea. They grow to be about eight to 10 inches, and they're known for, well, the pink belly. You can see how pink colored the plastron is, and also the underside of the marginal scoots and her chin. Some of them, though, are so pale colored, they're almost white. These turtles inhabit rivers, lagoons, streams, and ponds, and something really interesting about them, they are a kelid. They are part of the Kelidae family of turtles, and those turtles are known as the Austro-South American side neck turtles. They're found in Australia, New Guinea, Indonesia, and throughout South America. These turtles have a fossil record that dates back all the way to the Cretaceous period. So, you might say these guys and girls have been around for quite a while. Absolutely fantastic aquatic turtles species that is still pretty abundant today. Next up is North America's spotted turtle. This is one of the United States' most iconic species and also one of our smallest, being fully grown at only between four and four and a half inches, typically. Spotted turtles are in decline in the United States from habitat encroachment as well as collection for the pet trade. And some really interesting factors about them is that spotted carapace. Why does it look like that? Well, when these things are traveling along the bottom of a cedar creek, they blend in effortlessly with the pea gravel and sand granules at the bottom of the water. In fact, sometimes you don't even realize that you're looking at one until it starts moving considerably. Spotted turtles are migrators, and what that means is they don't spend time in the summer in the bodies of water that they would be hibernating in. So they may seek out vernal pools or ponds in the forest to spend the winter, and then once things warm up, First thing that they'll do is eat some amphibian larvae because that's timed with spring and then they will disperse to other bodies of water for the summer and even fall. And then before it's time to go back to hibernation, they return to those vernal pools. They are an absolutely beautiful species and they are some of the first ones awake in the spring because being so dark colored and small, it takes very little for them to heat up in the spring sun. This next turtle is one of the top 25 most endangered turtle species on the planet. Hailing from Laos and China, this is Barrett's box turtle known as Cora Barretti. This turtle has a very low reproductive rate, laying only one to two eggs per year, and the hatch rate, well, unfortunately, is low as well. This turtle has been hunted to near extinction in its native habitat for both Chinese medicine and, of course, the pet trade. It's a shire species, but it is a box turtle, having that plastral hinge there, meaning this animal can close up completely and very tightly. They live in dim forests, and they're not fans of very bright light. They prefer leaf litter and low-lying vegetation that they can hide under, forage under, and also nest under. Something really cool about them, their eggs are absolutely massive. I'm talking like that big. They're pushing about three inches in size in some cases. They're fully grown at about this size. You're looking at six to sometimes upwards of eight inches, and they're one of the flower back box turtles along with Cora galbinifrons and Cora picturata. Leaving Asia and heading all the way over to the Amazon and Orinoco basins, we find the world's weirdest turtle species by far. This is the Mata Mata turtle. This freshwater turtle species lurks at the bottom of freshwater bodies and it looks like fallen leaves or a rotting log. So to an unsuspecting fish that has absolutely no idea what's going on, all this animal has to do is sit and wait. And then when the fish gets too close, boom, they use something called suction feeding to gobble the entire fish down in one shot. They also have a snorkel at the end of their nose right there. And what they do is they just sit there and then they stick their long necks all the way up to the surface of the water and just barely put the tip of that snorkel out to get some air. And then that's it. They can stay submerged for very prolonged periods. These animals can grow to be upwards of two feet in length. This is Jada, our Mata Mata, Jada the Mata. And she's a young female, has a long way to go, but she's a wonderful representation of this bizarre yet absolutely fascinating turtle species. All right. 
Heading a bit north into the state of Florida, we find one of North America's beautiful box turtles. This is the Florida box turtle, whose scientific name is either Terrapine Carolina Bowri or Terrapine Bowri. Why is that? Well, it depends on who you source when it comes to the taxonomy of this animal. They were once considered a subspecies of the common box turtle or eastern box turtle, but some consider them to be a full species. Some refer to them as the poor man's star tortoise because they have those beautiful yellow lines that sometimes look like stars all over the carapace. Florida box turtles are in decline and they have a limited range being only really from Florida except kind of into Georgia just a little bit. But nonetheless, they are rather prolific. And in fact, some of our female Florida box turtles will lay upwards of five clutches of eggs in a single season. Being from Florida, you would think that they're only tolerable of warmer temperatures, but that's also not true. They actually can handle very cold temperatures. And like all other North American box turtles, they are capable of not only submerging, but even swimming in water. While we're in Florida, let's make sure we check out the largest turtle species in North America and one of the largest turtles in the world. This is the alligator snapping turtle. This is Chief Brody, and he's the Apalachicola representation of his species. Depending on who you cite, there's either two or three species of alligator snapping turtle, and Chief Brody happens to be the one that is found in Apalachicola. These animals, unlike what we've been taught for so many years, are not just lazy swamp monsters that sit there and do nothing. Sure, they do use that worm-like appendage in their mouth to lure in an unsuspecting fish, but they also actively hunt, and they'll even do it at night. Night. And in fact, one of Chief Brody's main food items in the wild and even here at Garden State Tortoise is clams. These animals are mollusk and crustacean eaters and they have no issue breaking through the shell, swallowing it, and even passing it. What a remarkable ancient animal that can live to be more than 150 years old. Wow, they're just, they're absolutely magnificent. It never gets old checking these guys out. Mexico has a wonderful diversity of reptiles and amphibians, and turtles are no exception to that. Right here in front of me are three examples of the Oaxaca mud turtle, which is named after, both scientifically and commonly, after its location, Oaxaca, Mexico. These are wonderful, interesting turtles that grow to be about six inches in length, and they're actually known for three distinct keels on the carapace, which wear down as they grow up. These are adults, so we're not really seeing too much of that anymore. Their ecology is not unlike that of American mud turtles and that they do prefer muddy, shallow bodies of water, but they can also take to land where they will estivate in extremely hot weather or brumate in cooler weather. Mud turtles are amazing animals that have a very powerful bite. In fact, some people refer to them as little snapping turtles. You don't want to get bit by these little guys because they are capable of crushing small crustaceans and also eat tadpoles, snails, inverts like beetles, but they also take a lot of plant matter in as well. Indonesia is another place on our planet that's known for its wonderful reptile and amphibian diversity. And if we go over to the island of Sulawesi, we find some very interesting and strange ones. This is the Sulawesi forest turtle, scientifically known as Leucocephalon yuanawoi, which means white-headed, because the males develop beautiful white heads. This turtle was only discovered in 1995, and later in the 90s, it was believed by some that there were as few as 100 left in nature. So it's no surprise, this turtle is also one of the top 25 most endangered turtle species on our planet today. In addition to habitat encroachment, habitat loss, water pollution, and of course, illegal collection for the pet trade, this animal has an extremely low reproductive rate, laying only one to two eggs per year. And it's believed that in captivity, as few as 20 have ever been hatched under human care. They're a powerful animal that can inflict a painful bite. They're an omnivore, so they eat both plant and animal matter, and they prefer cool mountain-type streams, not unlike the North American wood turtle found back in the States. This is what I was just referring to, another mountain stream dweller. This is North America's wood turtle, named for the sculpted look of the carapace because it looks as though it had been carved out of wood. The North American wood turtle is an extremely cold tolerant species that actually occurs right here in New Jersey, but way north of us and all the way over to the Great Lakes region and even into Canada. This animal 
is arguably considered the world's smartest reptile species, and some people have put their intelligence up against monitor lizards. Now, as somebody who works with monitor lizards as well, let me tell you, it's no joke when it comes to just how smart these turtles are. They're problem solvers. And I'll tell you another fun fact about them. They know how to stomp for earthworms. Well, what is that? That's when earthworms are underground and wood turtles take their plastron and start repeatedly slamming it down on the ground to simulate raindrops. That then drives the unsuspecting worms to the surface where the wood turtle just gets to gobble them up. North American wood turtles are an endangered species. They are rapidly in decline and that's in part to the fact that they are naturally an outgoing species that moves. These animals hibernate and breed in stream beds but then once the summer comes the females especially take to land and they often find themselves being confronted with farm equipment because they prefer to forage and nest in farm areas. While we're in the United States, let's make our way over to the salt marsh region of our country, particularly from Cape Cod to about Maryland. That's where we will find the Northern Diamondback Terrapin, which is one of seven subspecies of Diamondback Terrapin found in the United States. The Northern Diamondback Terrapin is an amazing animal full of variation. No two animals are the same. In fact, some can have purple skin with Sharpie-like markings or white skin with the same kind of markings. Sometimes they're entirely black with peppered skin Sometimes they have bluish hues to the skin and really everything in between. An absolutely remarkable animal where you really can't pin one to be just like the other. These animals were almost hunted to extinction back in the 1920s when we were serving up turtle soup and they have made a major comeback. This happens to be the species we do most of our conservation work with here in New Jersey and our project is called the Terrapin Conservation Initiative. Males, as you can see, are much smaller than big females and really the only reason for that is that the females have to carry large clutches of eggs. They can lay anywhere between 6 and 16 in a single clutch and they can lay up to 3 clutches in one season. Back to Asia we go, China to be exact. This is one of the world's rarest turtle species. I know you've heard me say endangered a few times, and this is also one of the top 25 most endangered turtle species today, but this animal is seriously critically endangered. This is Cora macordi, McCord's box turtle. Found in bamboo patches of broadleaf forests, this turtle was not discovered in nature until 2005, and no live specimens have been seen in its native range since 2010, so it is believed to be extinct in nature. But this turtle's demise began in the 1980s when the turtle trade of Asia really took off. Coramacordae is not a very big species, they're semi-terrestrial or semi-aquatic, and they grow to be about 6 to 8 inches. These animals, like many others, were hunted to extinction in nature for medicinal purposes and also the pet trade. While they have a long way to go, it is believed that there are between seven and 800 reproductive adults in captivity worldwide today. Since we're in China, let's make sure we check out one of the most popular turtles over there that is also very popular in herpetoculture still today. This is the Chinese box turtle, Cora flava marginata. Like our box turtles, it has a hinge on the plastron, enabling it to fully close up. But this turtle goes by two other names, one being the yellow margined box turtle and also the snake eating turtle, because this turtle does not hesitate to effectively kill and consume snakes. Cora flava marginata has one fun fact about them that is not so fun for the species or if you keep them. They won't hesitate to eat each other's eggs or their own eggs. I'm serious about that. A nesting female will literally spin right around and consume her own eggs. This seems to be reported mostly in captivity, but something tells me it might also happen in nature. No surprise, they are endangered as they've been collected for many, many years for both medicinal purposes and for the pet trade, but they are an absolutely stunning species with a whole lot of contrast going on there with the dark mahogany shell and that beautiful yellow and orange face. Okay, let's head back to Mexico real quick and take a look at one other of their beautiful, fascinating turtle species. This is the Mexican box turtle, Terrapine mexicana. Right off the bat, something you'll really notice is the difference in coloration between the males and the females. The males are known to have an insane array of coloration on the head and legs. They can be blue and red and yellow and white, whereas the females, a little bit more of a uniform brown color. But nonetheless, what the Mexican box turtle lacks in its shell coloration, it truly makes up for in its skin color, at least on the males. Another fun fact about the males, you can't tell the difference from male and female by looking at the plastron. While most other box turtle males have a deeply concave plastron, 
Mexican box turtles don't. They're level or flat, just like the female. Mexican box turtles are targeted heavily by poachers, and in recent years, droves of them have been removed from their native habitats in Mexico and sent to all different places across the world. That's how we ended up with ours, and that's why they have numbers on them. Authorities put these numbers on them because ours recently came from a confiscation. Making our way over to areas like India, Pakistan, or even Bangladesh, we come across a very beautiful turtle, one that can grow to be upwards of 16 inches. This is the Indian Spotted Pond Turtle, also called the Indian Black Pond Turtle. Their Latin name is Geoclemys Hamiltoni, and Geoclemys happens to be a monotypic genus, meaning there's only one living species within it, and that is this turtle right here in front of us. They're a beautiful black-colored turtle with white or yellow spotting on the shell and head, and these these guys will actually lose the spotting on the shell mostly, but retain it on the face and the head. They are omnivores. They do eat a lot of plant and animal matter, and unfortunately, they are as well endangered, like many of the other turtle species you got to see in this video. They are a freshwater turtle species, being primarily aquatic, and they develop very powerful heads. You'll also notice the three distinct keels that run along the carapace. They are named after the Scottish ichthyologist Francis Hamilton. Let's finish this thing off in the United States with what is quite possibly our most familiar and iconic species of all, the Eastern box turtle. This is Otis right here, and he is a perfect example of his species, Terrapine, Carolina, Carolina. And believe it or not, his coloration is perfectly normal. Males are that beautiful, vibrant orange and black or yellow and black, but some females can be just as vibrant as well. Sadly, Eastern box turtles are rapidly in decline. Many of us got our start with this fascinating turtle, but in today's world, we see less and less of them each and every year. Over collection for the pet trade, habitat loss, and road mortality play a major role in why these turtles are becoming fewer and fewer by the minute. But there are conservation measures measures in place, and Otis is a prime educational ambassador for Eastern box turtles as a whole. They can live to be more than 150 years old too, so keep that in mind. They're supposed to outlive us. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Time is up. We just did 15 amazing turtle species in 15 minutes, and hey, we did already do one on 15 tortoise species, so click the link above me if you want to go check out that video next. I will see you all in the next video, but in the meantime, head to the top of our channel, click the subscribe button because you have no idea how big of a deal that is for us to keep our channel going, and while you're at it, click the bell icon next to it so you receive notifications every single time we post.